I want to stick roughly $1,500 worth of SSDs into a Mac Pro that's worth about $50 or so, but we need to talk about PCIe and the way Apple implements it to make sense of why we need this card for all these SSDs. What I'm trying to say is this video is as much about PCIe as it is this card. How do I say this? Apple's relationship with PCIe really sucks. This is Tim Apple, president of Computer. I am dancing with anticipation for this great YouTube video. Apple managed to ship a Mac Pro without any PCIe slots. They never embraced the M2 standard before removing the ability to swap SSDs completely. Then when they actually did bring back PCI in 2019, it was on a computer that cost six thousand dollars and it didn't even support bifurcation which is really important for this video but we'll get to that in a second and while the mac pro 2023 supports pcie it no longer supports pcie gpus but it does support storage like this card this is not a rant video but i swear that all was important as a refresher, PCIe uses pairs of wires for sending and receiving data. One pair equals one lane. A 4X PCIe slot has four pairs of wires, meaning it has 32 lanes. If that sounds wrong, that is because you were paying attention. Gold star. The answer is four lanes. More lanes equals more data, and these slots come in 1X, 4X, 8X, and 16X. NVMe SSDs can only use four PCIe lanes for a drive regardless if it's connected to a slot with more lanes. On many modern PCs, a single PCIe slot can split up its lanes to host multiple NVMe drives. An 8X PCIe slot could be split in half for two NVMe SSDs on a single slot. This process is called bifurcation. However, Apple in its infinite wisdom does not support bifurcation on any of its PCIe Macs despite having a wealth of PCIe lanes. This means only one NVMe SSD on a PCIe slot regardless if that slot is 4x, 8x, or 16x. <laughs> but you probably already deduced that there's technology to get around this limitation. These are M2 host cards with specialized controller chipsets that are capable of addressing the additional available lanes in a PCIe slot. Of course, this additional hardware costs money. Today, I have the best in class of these cards for the Mac Pro 2019, the Sonnet M2 4x4 Silent PCIe card. This is a beast of a card that can support four NVMe drives on a single slot and get some really incredible speeds. Sonnet was kind enough to provide me this PCIe card to review, so special thanks to them. They put absolutely no stipulations on what I can say about this card or any content requirements, so every word of this video is my own opinion. In fact, to prove it, I'm going to do something that no company would ever approve of showing a clip from the movie Battlefield Earth. I am so surprised that clip didn't get this video demonetized. That is a company that is confident in their product and you'll see why. If you are a longtime viewer or someone who's read my definitive Mac Pro upgrade guide series, you probably are aware that these cards for the classic Mac Pros can unlock full PCI 3.0 speeds for a single NVMe drive, despite the classic Mac Pros only using PCI 2.0. For that previous statement to make sense, we need to go back to PCIe lanes. Each generation of PCIe doubles the bandwidth total per lane. On screen is a table showing that info. And behind the table is the theatrical trailer for Battlefield Earth. Each generation of PCIe effectively is twice as fast as the previous generation. Also on screen is every generation of Mac Pro and the version of PCIe that it shipped with. For this video, I'm going to fill this card with 16 terabytes of NVMe storage and do something completely irresponsible. Raid zero them. We'll talk about Raid in a bit. I bought these drives off a certain website and I'll be making use of their <clears throat> return policy as this is $1,200 worth of SSDs. 
For context, this is enough storage to hold roughly 450 copies of the Battlefield Earth Blu-ray. <laughs> I swear, Sonic's gonna regret sending me PCIe cards. Currently on my Mac Pro 2019, I have four NVMe SSDs already. Two of these drives are on generic single drive M2 host cards. However, I do have one card that is capable of hosting two drives in one slot. It is a generic ASM2824 chipset. The particular card I bought is the Ablecom PX M2 130, although it goes by many names like the StarTech PX 8 M2 E2 or the Lycom DT130. They're all basically the same. This card is solid, but it will crash if only one drive is populated and it's not as performance minded. It served me well though, traveling from my classic Mac Pro 2010 to my Mac Pro 2019. With a computer like the Mac Pro 7,1, you might wonder why bother with a multi-port card as you have plenty of PCIe slots. Not all PCIe lanes are created equally. 32 lanes or 216x slots in the Mac Pro 2019 are direct lanes to the CPUs and the rest of the PCIe lanes are behind the platform controller hub on a shared bus. When jumping between a bunch of PCIe cards, you're asking the PCH to do more bus management, whereas the direct access lanes have less overhead. In the real world, this usually isn't a big deal, but since we're running RAID 0, we want the absolute lowest latency. So first, let's install all the SSDs. I have four 4 terabyte WD Black SN850X drives. These are really damn fast SSDs. They use TLC memory, they have DRAM for caching, and a WD proprietary controller and an endurance of 2,400 terabytes, which is really good. While these drives are targeted at gaming, they are near top of the stack for modern NVMe and made for PCI 4.0. I won't be getting PCI 4.0 speeds on a single drive sadly as the Mac Pro 2019 is PCI 3.0. The upside here is PCI 4.0 drives work fine in PCI 3.0 and I'd argue that latency and random read and write performance is more important than the maximum transfer speeds. Installing the card is brain dead easy, it's plug and play. While most of my audience knows what RAID is, redundant array of independent disks, the shortest answer is it is a technology that allows you to link multiple drives together for performance and or redundancy. Mac OS when it comes to RAID is pretty mediocre and your only choices are RAID 0 and RAID 1. In the era of SSDs, quite frankly, RAID is a lot less important, especially for most home users as SSDs are fast enough and reliable enough. For maximum performance, I'm using RAID 0. This is the most performance-minded RAID configuration. The danger of RAID 0 is if one of your drives fails, you'll get zero of your files back. Now it's time to do some benchmarks. Sonnet lists 1.7 gigabytes a second reads and 1.6 gigabytes a second writes. However, when I tested this with Crystal Disk Mark, I exceeded this significantly with 14 gigabytes a second. That's 2.3 gigabytes a second faster than they listed. Some of the results are confusing and I'm not sure what to make of Crystal Dismar's random tests. Since numbers don't mean much without context, here's me in real time duplicating a 100 gigabyte file. The only real question becomes, is it worth spending $299 on the card plus $1,200 on SSDs? As well as $17 for... All right, even I'm getting bored of the gag. I think perspective really matters to understand this card's value. Here's my M1 Max with a two terabyte drive and it uses PCI 4.0 speeds. The M2 and M3 computers have not radically changed their performance, so this is fairly indicative of what you would expect. If you were to put eight terabytes of storage in an M3 Max, it would cost you $2,200. Compare that to my Mac Pro 2019 with double the storage at 16 terabytes and better performance. It comes out to be $1,495. That's $705 worth of savings. And you could use cheaper SSDs than I did. Also, these WD Black SSDs are faster than the NANDs Apple uses and why this solution is just so important. There's a class of users who are just willing to pay for the Mac Pro 2023 just so they can have these sort of speeds internally. <laughs> In case four drives is not enough, Sonnet offers an incredible eight slot PCI 4.0 card that can jam up to 64 terabytes of storage and achieve 30 gigabytes a second reads and 18 gigabytes a second writes. 
You can even use this card in the Mac Pro 2019, but you'll be capped to 14 GB a second reads and 12 GB a second writes, which is basically the same as this Sonnet 4X4 card in my testing. Having a 16 terabyte drive is nuts, and man do I wish I could keep these drives. But what's nuttier is sticking these into a Mac Pro 2008. I told Sonnet I'd state if I use these products in an off-label manner, and this is certainly off-label. The Mac Pro 2008 is a special beast. It's the oldest Mac Pro that can run modern Mac OS with open core, but it never had native bootable NVMe support like the Mac Pro 5,1. So we're going to do something stupid. Put this $1,500 NVMe setup into a $50 computer. Even the Mac Pro 2008 has two 16x slots, the second being directly above the GPU slot. This was a real pain in the ass to get this card to fit above the RX 580. It shouldn't come as a surprise, but it works fine with Monterey as not the bootable drive. Of all things considered, this is very close to a single PCI 4.0 drive. I doubt a Mac Pro 5.1 would have a whole lot of performance difference. Would I recommend spending $1,500 on SSDs and a PCIe card for a Mac Pro 2008? Probably about the same as recommending Battlefield Earth. Apple dropped bootable RAID array support when it introduced APFS as its default file system. There are ways to get NVMe working on a Mac Pro 2008 as a bootable volume, and that is through things like open core or using EFI scripts or even modifying the boot ROM but I'm not going to do that in this video as it's not that interesting. I looked into trying to get macOS bootable off a RAID array in Monterey, and it looks like the internet's largely given up. There were some back channel ways to get like Catalina running on a RAID 0 array, but most people considered it not worth the risk because OS updates would brick the bootability of the system. So RAID 0 booting is pretty much dead on macOS. So it's time for my closing thoughts. If you're in the Mac Pro 2019 market, this is the card. Yeah, I know it's $299, but its performance is basically at the threshold of PCI 3.0's capabilities. It also works in Mac Pro 5.1's. While I don't do numbered ratings, this card is basically the top shelf storage solution for Mac Pros, and it can carry up to 32 terabytes of storage if you're willing to spend, oh, $3,000 on SSDs, but those prices will change over time. These Sonic cards are pretty much the only reason that the Mac Pro 2023 exists. This is the aspirational upgrade for all Mac Pro owners and a necessity for certain people. This card does not disappoint. I'd like to thank my Patreon subscribers and I made a bonus video about using media clips from a certain movie and the problems it poses on YouTube and how you can solve those. Once again, a very special thanks to Sonnet for sending me this card. Links are in the description. Wow, wasn't that great. Almost as great as my favorite movie, Battlefield Earth. This is Tim Apple. President of Computer, signing off, 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 off.